Hi everyone, my name is Henrik Götberg. I'm the uh, Insights and Data Backbone owner at Scania Financial Services. So today I want to talk about what do we mean uh, with an Insights and Data Backbone and uh, why do we go in this direction? Um, the presentation can actually be called Repositioning Scania Financial Services in the Digital Economy. So if I, if I really think about what we are doing, it's about working with our tech stack in a, in a different way in order to be fit for a data and AI ready uh, society. For Scania, that means being part of a transport ecosystem. It means to do this the Scania way. It's very interesting. Let me tell you about the Scania way. It's amazing. What is really making Scania today one of the best world-class in, in truck manufacturing and bus manufacturing and all this? There's a couple of key ingredients. One is their excellence in modularization. So how they have, how they have designed the, the truck, so you can have a, the engine team working autonomously, uh, uh, with the drive versus the drivetrain team, the chassis team, the cab team. So they figured out very, very early how to modularize their manufacturing process as a way to basically reduce complexity and create autonomy and different and, 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 uh, and horizons on, on what releases to do with products. So it means that you can have a product release roadmap for the engine that doesn't need to fit perfectly with the uh, product release roadmap of, of the, of the drivetrain. It's unheard of in, in, in the truck industry before uh, Scania did it. This is one key, key nugget to their success. Another key uh, part is lean. Scania is one of the best companies in the world on the concepts of lean. Uh, we, we know about lean from Toyota, Kitesin, uh, how to the relentless pursuit of continuous improvement and how that really is part of the culture. So, so there is something called the Scania way and, and you can go to trainings and all that. So what happens when now Scania as a truck manufacturer needs to move over to a transport ecosystem? What happens when the, the truck is actually maybe not even what we are selling in the end, but we are selling transport? And to be, to be part of an ecosystem, not only is it your truck, but it's now the data and AI and software that needs to talk to other data, AI and software in, in a transport ecosystem. So what is the Scania way, what, what made us world class as a truck manufacturer, what is then the Scania way for data, AI and software? So, you see, the strengths and, all, and how, how strong we are and, and what we have figured out in the manufacturing space is, is a different journey, uh, how we are working uh, you know, in, in the IT space, with our administrati administrative uh, processes. So here, this has been a, a key point, right? If we are trying to figure out how we can improve on what we are today, uh, this digital repositioning, we, we have actually from the beginning trying to understand it from what would that look like and what can be that be uh, in the Scania way. And what is the Scania way when I take this from truck manufacturing and into financial services? Now, in reality, the starting point is the classical enterprise dare dilemma. You know, the enterprise data dilemma highlights that, you know, whatever digital use cases we drive, whatever improvements we drive with data and AI to become data and AI ready there, um, is happening on, on a very granular level. The use case, the algorithm, it's very concrete in order for it to work. In order to build algorithms, you need to be super concrete on the problem you're solving. So it's driving you to work uh, in, in the use case team. But how do you scale that? How do you scale that globally? And if you are very good at this customer centricity and entrepreneurship that has made Scania great uh, 
out in the market. Uh, how do you drive? That's the equivalent of being great at the individual use case, so to speak. But how do you scale that? And, and how do you have autonomy in scaling these use cases whilst at the same time not fragmenting uh, the whole landscape? So here we have a starting point with, 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 uh, with, with our, a strong customer centricity, so it's a very decentralized culture for a good reason. Uh, that has really made us what we are. Uh, if I go to Skana Financial Services, operating in four regions, 20 business units, 60 markets, where basically this way of looking at the world has driven a, 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 our legacy IT is local IT, on-prem. And it's, it fitted really well uh, when, we, you know, when we grew and, and we evolved uh, as a company one market at a time in a very fast, uh, efficient way for each market. Uh, at the same time, we have always had a lean head office in, in Scania Financial Service, FS Financial Services. And now we're entering into the decade of data and AI industrialization. So we are truly feeling the tsunami of data and AI and software needs inside the company from all over. You know, autonomous vehicles, uh, we are, uh, how we are, the customer experience, uh, financial services. So it's, in, it's, in, it's sort of from this starting point, we need to now start thinking about what is re, uh, digital repositioning. What is our refocus all about? What is integration, automation, optimization all about? Our key words, what we are trying to achieve. Um, that's the flying. Let's now talk about insight and data backbone. Let's get to the topic. So actually, let's start with a very simple question. This um, repositioning, uh, integration, automation, refocus, what's the date, data perspective of a statement like that? Yeah, so we, we talk about uh, how we need to be, become better on stage, uh, you know, how we meet the customer, how the customer experience is both digitized, but also how it, it's actually virtual. It, it's both digitized and, 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 and physical with, with sales guys and workshops dealers, stuff like this. So one key stop topic we highlight is that we are coming from a topic where we have had more, more focus on the back backstage, the, 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 the way financial services has grown up. And it's a little bit different in different markets, but it, it's, the, it, the identity has been one of a service provider, has been one of, you know, we are here to, 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 you know, to facilitate the service of financing, you know, a loan, uh, insurance, leasing for uh, fleets of trucks, fleets of buses, uh, stuff like this. Now, if we, if we now want to refocus that we say that we want to be a deal facilitator, we say that we want to integrate the financial offering into the fundamental core offering of Scania. If we think we are a transport ecosystem and we want to sell uh, uh, a managed service, financing, you know, financing models is a key ingredient of how you buy or how you buy the service. So here we say now, we want to expand the 20% focus of selling, so to speak, to a deal facilitator role 60%. So it drives a lot more in terms of what we need to know about the customer, uh, how we need to ha have insights, but also freeing up time uh, for the people to work as a de de deal facilitator rather than anything else. What is the other 80% is the typical backstage topics. You know, it's, it's running, you know, financing, credit, contracts, uh, pricing of, of, of loan and leasing. And if we want to drastically reduce those 80%, you know, we need to rethink how we are doing our admin processes. Relentless pursuit of uh, automation at the one hand, you know, cleaning up our core systems and our core workflows. So they are essentially built from an automation point of view first, and then optimization, you know, to, to improve. If you look at the data perspective now, where, where this is going with the insight and data backbone, what that is all about, it means we need to stop doing a lot of stuff which has had to do with managing data. And I usually, I usually say like, you can have the perfect core system, you, you, you invest in a new ERP system, and you put all your efforts here and all your money here. But in essence, 
if you're not at the same time thinking about the twilight zone, the stuff, how we get data in and out of our systems, how we get it to analytics, how everything fits together, you will not reach automation because you will still have a lot of admin, you know, physically people moving data, managing, massaging, wrangling data. So this is the point, right? My focus, the Insight Data Backbone team's focus is on the twilight zone or taking something as a, that can be a twilight zone and making it into something uh, uh, strategic, how, how we work uh, outside of our core systems or not outside of our core systems, how we work in a platform thinking around this. So first, let, when I say Insight and Data Backbone, so what do we really mean? So what's our vision uh, where, where this is going? Uh, Platform-oriented thinking here. The easiest way to start going into this topic more and more detail now is to think about the core design principles that, that will enable refocus and integration through modularization. So if I take the keywords modularization, refocus to be digital and automated and all that, and integration, integrating the financial services offering with the larger SCONI offering, we see some fundamental uh, ideas of, of where we are going with our, with our fundamental system landscape. So, so number one is that we, we think we are going towards a, a, a decoupled front end. So micro front ends uh, for you know, the different parts of Scania, having the different parts as widgets if in, 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 a, in a larger setting of, of, a, of the customer experience. So the way the customer experience Scania or the way a user experience their daily life. They shouldn't need to flip through all the different applications. One application comes from finance, another, another application comes from sales, a third one comes from manufacturing. So, so, so the strategy of, 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 of UX and how we build micro front ends essentially is one key strategy. Another key strategy and, and what, we have, what we are working on in, in Scania is to establish a very strong API hub. So essentially, instead of me thinking as a full stack provider of everything I do, you know, we build something in financial services and now I need to build a, a, a front-end portal on it, we think that our services needs to be able to be consumed via APIs and other ways into uh, other services. We don't think financial services will, will drive the whole UX strategy for Scania. We will drive a widget in this Konya uh, UX strategy. So then basically we need to think about whatever we do in our core processes that is sort of a quote for a financing deal, it, we need to be able to push that in, into other systems. Uh, then when it comes to our own systems, when it comes to the financial services core system, now we're talking about loan and leasing systems. Uh, we're talking about co core, core finance and accounting invoicing systems. Uh, those systems in the future, we, we look at them as uh, different source applications that are part of the platform strategy. So it means we are trying to avoid building our, our, our source applications that they grow as monoliths, but rather keeping them as clean as possible and in a way as one module in itself. So a loan and leasing module, a, uh, a finance and accounting module. Uh, and as, to, as far as possible, decouple this from what is fundamentally data, what is our data backbone. So, so how do we build architecture so each application doesn't need to be a full stack application, but we can, we can free up the data uh, in, in a smarter way. Um, sec next key principle is that all this stuff now, because we are going towards a, a source idea in cloud, is, is sort of modules in a larger uh, platform strategy. And the platform strategy is, is, is to work uh, in, in a cloud environment to, to one degree, with all the services we can do in cloud, you know, everything from, from, from big data to web applications. But also then now taking SaaS applications as part, as integrating that uh, inside this, uh, the cloud strategy. Another key part of this is the SDP, Scania Data Platform. So this is basically our big, da big data analytics, machine learning uh, uh, system landscape uh, in cloud. So, so basically, we are trying to set up now uh, these topics so we can have 
any type of data provisioning. And when I say any type of data provisioning, I mean online transactional processing for the operational workflows. I need, uh, I mean online analytical processing, uh, all up uh, for the more analytical uh, types of data products. Now, and when we when we when we look at this now, we come to the, uh, also another dimension of this is the global scale. And here we, we, we are using the analogy of the hotel. So what is common data uh, uh, products? What are common core applications that we all use? That is that we find in the hotel lobby, so to speak, of, of uh, the whole uh, platform. And what is uh, local data products or local data environments uh, that is out on the business unit uh, globally? So, so how can we set up hotel rooms for a business unit so they can basically do their local IT, but as part of, of, uh, of the fundamental uh, cloud strategy. Uh, if I go a little bit on the, on the production side of, of reporting and insights and analytics, we think the same way here. What, what are the fundamental areas and how we work uh, with analytics uh, and, and BI um, reporting, which are the common areas and, where do, and how do we facilitate that these environments are ready uh, for uh, for the uh, local business units as well, whatever to the relevant degree of uh, complexity uh, that they have competence for. We have some really big markets where they have very big competences, and we have some uh, simpler markets or smaller markets, I, I should say, where, where they are relying more on head office, so to speak. So we need to cater for for different flavors of hotel rooms. Now, so when we go on this journey now. Ultimately, we also think carefully about the data backbone and using this data backbone for a lift and shift of all legacy technology. So, so this journey is also a dry out journey of how we have done local on-prem IT. So we're still gonna need local IT or the local data products, but how can we then uh, facilitate, orchestrate that we can have local IT, so to speak, but not a complete local data center in isolation and that and in silo that doesn't work. So when we say insights and data backbone, we are trying to understand how our core systems fit together with our UX strategy, to, uh, to, uh, our front end strategy, together with our uh, data provisioning and data backbone strategy. So when we zoom in now here, I mean, like one of the key words to talk about is modularization. And modularization, you know, the Scania way, um, we need to think about modularization from many different angles uh, to get it right when it comes to data, AI, and software. So in one way, we have many different use cases, but we don't want people to have hundreds of different apps to, to flip around. So how do we build use cases as apps, as widgets in a UX strategy? to make a great customer experience, to make a great dealer experience, to make a great user experience. And then we come to the sort of, you know, whatever applications or, or logic we need, uh, we need to have, uh, or even analytics, uh, we look carefully at this in a modular way and also make careful decisions. Where do we buy something off the shelf and, and put that as a module as part of the platform strategy? And, and when do we make it? You know, making it, building it from scratch, using a AWS technology, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and with information, the same way. How can we modularize uh, our data sets? How can we make them more shareable and re reusable? So this whole thinking, you know, we want to treat our data, our algos, our algorithms, our code as assets, as Lego pieces. Um, we think that's the new way. We, we think that's the way you know, when we, when we learn from what the Airbnbs are doing, um, what Uber is doing, what's, uh, what um, Spotify is doing, uh, how do we translate that uh, to something that could work and will work for, for, for an enterprise and also for legacy? It's, it, it will not be the same, but we can learn a lot at, at the same time of how to think about modularization. Now, another key idea on this is we, we start to think now these modules as data products. And you can call it data sets, you can call it data assets, but we are driving the idea all the way down 
to have these modules, you know, now if I'm moving away from sort of applications, but I'm moving more into the analytical space, data pipeline space, uh, DevOps space, uh, data mesh space, we are trying to understand what a data product needs to consist of in order to work. And, and the core idea here is basically that we sit in Scania Financial Services, SFS. So we are, we are the best in Scania when it comes to credit uh, and, and understanding customer uh, KYC. It's part of the banking regulations, AML, right? But in reality, those services or, or, or that data product to, to do AML checks or, or whatever it could be, is needed in other applications. So how can we build data products that can essentially then in the end through APIs or you know or streaming uh, Kafka different we can do it in different ways technically but how can we think about having something that SFS is done being consumed by other applications or other data products um, so when we when you go down that path you, you end up with well it's not only enough to have a, a, a data set uh, you need to have something more in order to make it consumable um, uh, in order to uh, in order to find it, in order to you know consume it, in order to share it, uh, it's not also a going down the monolithic path. You know, I, I think we have, we've been there. We, we are now talking cloud zero, uh, two point zero. So in in one way, our big data system was built uh, several years ago and was built on the more layered approach. Uh, but 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 essentially, it becomes a bottleneck. Essentially, it becomes central IT has has a really, really hard time to dealing with the tsunami with one central IT team serving all the different domains of, of Scania and ultimately has no chance to knowing the domain itself. So we are now thinking about how do we understand our data platform, our cloud from a domain perspective and how do we make the, those domains work effectively together? So, I, so if, if we take like a, a cloud setup like AWS, and then we look at this as multi-tenants within our tenant, but logically different tenants. What, what is the financial services domain? What is the uh, manufacturing domain? And essentially what this is driving is that we can now look at what central IT is, is, is doing for the big data setup to, to build reusable design patterns versus that we in the data domain can build our data products. We know we have the domain knowledge exactly what analytics to build, uh, but we don't want to build this in a silo and we don't want to do it in a way so we need to draw the whole. We want to reuse design patterns uh, that happen somewhere else. So how can we build these scaffoldings? How can we build these templates? Have them in GitLab uh, and then basically very fast start with the new data products because we can set up the frame very fast and now we can focus on the content. So all this is basically now the facets of why we think we need an insights and data backbone. And what I thought I'd do now, I, I thought I'd do one slide where I, where I sort of zoom in on the core capabilities uh, of the different layers of, of, the, of the core thinking. So, so one way of looking at this is the, is the typical traditional architectural uh, capability map. So instead of talking now about a, a, a big CRM system or a big ERP system, we're trying to highlight in a modular way what are the core capabilities that our system needs to solve. And then you can see that some of these modules is part of one loan leasing system. And some of these uh, uh, core modules are built by us or, or, or it's actually another vendor that is very good at one particular thing. And, when, and within this space now, when, when we now say insights and data backbone and, and, and my sort of area where we are focusing on, it's the, the yellow borders. So essentially working on the core ideas of, around uh, design patterns for integration, OLTP, and core design patterns for OLAP. Data, and data backbone is all about data provisioning, integration, migration, and ultimately we can do it in many ways, right? We can do it, sometimes it, it's an integration flow that goes through the API hub. Sometimes we are building data sets or data products that we are using uh, to serve other more analytical products. On the insight space, it's of course traditional reporting and BI, but it's also the more advanced analytical use cases. And those more advanced analytical use cases takes us into slightly different technology. So, so somewhere you will have Power BI and somewhere you will have um, um, yeah, 
more, more uh, advanced uh, technology. But the problem with this picture, and this is a quite uh, classical problem, is it sort of shows like this would be some sort of central setup where, where everybody works the same. So we, we, are, we are trying to draw it in another way when I zoom in now. So if I go to the insights and data backbone part of this picture, I zoom in a little bit. If I zoom in now and, and basically expand on the stuff that is the analytics parts and the data backbone parts, you can, sort of, you can start seeing now that our data product thinking, the way we design things is we call it either you know, common data products or we call it common algorithm products. So here we are, we are working in the hotel lobby. Now, what is also you can see on the, more to the right here side is that what's the microcosmos of this, which is then the local data products uh, and the local algorithm products. So, so in this way, it's driving an, 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 not only a view on, on this architecture and technology, but it's, it's driving a very strong view of federated governance or federated sharing of best practices on design pattern level. Uh, but when we say insights and data backbone, uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are talking about these core topics. And ultimately, my starting point for this conversation was the fly-in, why we need to have it. So right now, we, we are trying to understand how far we should take this data product thinking. If you take it all the way, you end up in the, in the concepts that is coming up now uh, uh, with data mesh. Uh, if you take it half the way, you come to DevOps, uh, so to speak. So, so, so the thinking, the fundamental ideas of building a data factory start with the core thinking around DevOps or, or data ops, I should say. I should say data ops, machine learning ops. So taking software uh, development product ideas in, into how we build this instead of data warehousing or, or you know, monolithic warehouse ideas. Now, if you take it all the way, that we have different teams sitting in different parts of Scania working with fundamentally different data domains. Uh, if we have the fundamental idea that we need to cater for a hotel room versus a hotel lobby, now you're getting closer and closer to the data mesh. So I think this is the difference. Like right? in a Spotify environment, you have a core business uh, 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 that looks a little bit different. So here you can go uh, uh, data ops, but, but the fundamental size of Scania and, 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 and the fundamental topic of from manufacturing all the way to, to financial services, um, we are already distributed. So we are a distributed company. So whether we like it or not, whether we have a data mesh or not, we are doing our best we can without having all the right thinking uh, in place already, in my opinion. So to sort of take the last bits here, what we're getting out of this picture is more or less that we, 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 we are able to, to work uh, uh, autonomously cent uh, centrally and, and the local markets. We, we are, we're trying to make a data provisioning in such a way so we can, whatever investment we do for our core workflows, if we decouple it in a smart way, uh, we actually have part of the investment already done for how we're building up data, you know, in you know, getting the data, access to the data to build data products. And ultimately, the long-term strategy is that when we have these type of uh, hotel rooms, we will create the environment for the local business unit to, to stepwise lift and shift their, their, their legacy infrastructure and applications into the cloud. So, so some parts will be that we do infrastructure as a service in their hotel room, and some parts will be that we, you know, we shift into a different technology. That's my key story really around uh, what is an insight uh, and data backbone and um, why we're doing it and going in this direction. The leaving two minutes, I want to highlight that what we are looking at now to make this work, technology architecture is a very, very small part of this story. So we, we have talked about the modularization story today. But if I start looking at it, that to go to execution on this on a global scale, we've had to look at the technology side, the modularization side. We have had to look at the fundamental, you know, how to go, take away going from sort of project-centric view, waterfall-centric view, 
to, to a much more stable engine approach to investments, how we set up the teams, how we organize ourselves. We have had to look at uh, uh, how we understand product ownership, what is business PL ownership versus data product ownership, how do we understand the cross-functional team to, act, you know, to, to secure the adoption of what we are doing and how we are working out in the market versus uh, setting up design patterns, scaffoldings, and ways of working centrally. And so this ultimately shifting the way the identity of head office. Uh, we see this already. We, we are becoming a service provider towards the head office and not the traditional head office anymore. Um, it's servant leadership. Um, it's about facilitation orchestration. It's about creating pool out in the marketplace for, for the technologies and, and the stuff we do. It's, to cross, it's about cross-pollinating between the different business units rather than building stuff in Ceretelje and, and then try to push it out in the world. Um, it's about a, a journey which, where it's a snowball effect. It's a fundamental snowball effect that we have a, a strategic understanding for our architecture and we light it up in a lean way just in time. It's about data and analytics asset management and data governance, uh, design principle go governance, design pattern governance. And it's, ulti about, uh, it's ultimately about how we build communities in a learning organization. So the architectural is super important to get right, to get the tech stack right is super important but you do not have a modular approach. You do not have a data platform based on tech. It's the, it's the fundamental thinking that goes through everything when you go away from application-centric to data-centric that, that is important to understand. And that's why this is a data and AI readiness journey. It's so much more. You need to have all these facets working together to get to the multiplier effect. The 10x effect is because you have one I, module times engine times ownership times uh, snowball effect times data governance times community 10x effect. If you take away one of those in a, in a multiplier, if you have a mul multiplication, it's zero, you don't get to the value. So that's it. Thank you very much. This is our mission. This is what we are working on. Support uh, insight at your fingertips. Build a data foundation. Establish data-driven ways of working uh, from global to BU. That's what we are working on. The journey is on. Thanks. <laughs>